So Abigail was recently revealed for Street Fighter V and received with mixed reactions. Apparently not everybody is crazy about him, but I personally welcome the giant with open arms. And giant is a very appropriate word, cause this dude is huge, like inhumanly huge, even bigger than Hugo. Yeah, he's wacky and unrealistic, but so are Blanca and Dawson. Besides having one of the best stages in the game, this highly disproportionate fighter comes packing a special run, the mandatory command throw and a rapid sequence of punches, including a critical ward that leaves the adversary floating in the air while he's used as a speed bag. It's just brute force all around. Some people wondered if he could be jumped over or even throw, but I don't see why the confusion. It's not the first time in the series that we see big characters being grabbed with curious results. Even in Street Fighter V, if you only have a problem now but saw nothing funny about cutting spinning birdie in the air as if he's nothing, then you, my friend, is the weird one. This is also not the first time that a fighting game character much larger than his opponents joins the roster. In this list, we're going to check a few more of them and see how they compare with their fellow cast members. I want to be clear that this is only about characters that behave normally, so special bosses like Apocalypse and Galactus, or the so-called giant characters from Tatsunoko vs Capcom, Gold Lightan and PTX 40A are off the table. The first fighter that I want to mention comes from the original Samurai Shadow game, known in Japan as Samurai Spirits, and it's no other than Earthquake. This fat ninja towers over the competition with 285 centimeters. To give you some perspective, besides Tam Tam that shares his height but is much slimmer and fights in a crouch position that greatly hides his size, the next tallest fighter is Wan Fu, who stands pretty tall at 198 centimeters, which is still almost a meter shorter than Earthquake. And if we go the other way, Nakoruru with a little over 154 centimeters is the shortest character in the game and almost half his size, or much more than that if you consider body mass. She can still grab him normally, however, and nobody made a big fuss about it. Unfortunately though, most people seem to prefer the pretty boy archetype of character, so this very peculiar fighter was never that high in popularity. To make matters worse, the sheer size of his body meant that the game had to support some pretty massive sprites, something that was a little bit of a luxury back in the day, which meant that he had to be cut out of the Genesis version of Samurai Shadow. For these reasons, Earthquake's list of game appearances is rather modest, with only 3 major games in his own much larger series and a spot in 2003's SNK vs Capcom Chaos. Now, although I would prefer to add some variety by changing the focus to another game series, Samurai Shadow has one more extremely huge character that deserves to be mentioned, and that's already leaving Tam Tam out of it. This time, let's talk about Yokai Kusaregedo. He's a much more recent character, appearing for the first time in 2003's Samurai Shadow 5, and only really having one other title, the direct sequel, under his belt. I'm pretty sure he was also nobody's favorite character, as people were far more likely to choose one of the many ninjas or samurais instead of going for a giant, humanoid, cannibal monster. But what makes Kusaregedo worth noticing is his absolutely ridiculous size, 455 centimeters. It really makes Abigail look puny in comparison, doesn't it? Now, granted, this guy doesn't fight standing up, otherwise he could even fall into the category of Tatsunoko vs Capcom's giant characters. Instead, what Kusaregedo does is stay in a crouching position, almost sitting, as if he wanted to take a crap or something. Even like that though, he is still a huge figure on the screen, and one could easily expect that certain things wouldn't work on him, but they do. His humongous size actually works against him, as his huge hitbox makes Kusaregedo easy prey for attacks and character specific combos. Now we move to the Tekken series, and although we can't find a Goliath comparable to Samurai Shadow's largest character, the 3D fighter does have its share of abnormally big bosses in the roster. They may not be as absurd, but they arguably stand out more, since they're part of a game that tries a little harder to be realistic in terms of proportions. The two really big ones are the robot Nancy, that seems more like a Final Fantasy adversary than a character in a fighting game, and the main antagonist of Tekken 6, Azazel. I couldn't find reliable sources for his height, but upon comparison with other characters in the roster, he seems to be about 300 centimeters high, which is pretty big. 
Nancy might even be a little bit bigger, but being a machine, it doesn't impress me as much as Azazel, a living creature, albeit a magical one. Though not normally available, this magical beast can be selected with the help of a handy cheat code in some versions and, for the most part, behaves like a normal character, except for the fact that he packs some mighty unfair attacks. Next we have another character from a 2D game, where big fellas tend to be more normal, and this time we're taking a look at the Guilty Gear franchise. If we were to go only by sheer height, Faust would probably be a better choice, but besides fighting bent over, his skinny body just doesn't command as much respect in the scream as the sight of Potenkin does. Now, he might not be as huge as the other guys in this list, after all, he's only 245 centimeters high, nothing to write home about it, but he could have easily been much taller than that. Potenkin's upper body mass is just absurd. His hands are easily the size of a normal character's torso, with fingers as thick as Saul's bad guy's arms. If it wasn't for his posture, slightly bent over, and most importantly, his abnormally tiny legs when compared to the rest of his body, this guy would probably be big enough to reach the top of the screen. Instead, he's pretty much at eyesight with most of the cast, even though his muscles make him twice the size of most fighters in the game. That, of course, has absolutely no impact in gameplay. Even though he's a big, heavy fella, anyone can grab and throw him just as easily as they can spin Mei, the tiny pirate, around. Okay, well, so maybe you weren't so impressed with Potenkin's theoretical height. What's the point of comparing his upper body size and drawing conclusions on how tall he should be, right? That's fine, let's end this list with something more practical then. This time, let's go back to the PlayStation 1 era and take a look at an obscure fighting game developed by Dream Factory and published by Square, with characters designed by no other than Akira Toriyama, the man behind the legendary Dragon Ball series. That's right, we're talking about the 3D fighting game series known as Tobo, that only had two titles, Tobo No. 1 and Tobo No. 2, in 1996 and 1997 respectively. In this title, you get to use a variety of wacky characters straight out of Toriyama's imagination to fight your way to the top. And perhaps one of the most memorable ones, at least if you're looking for a big fella that can impose a lot of respect just by his sheer size, is the giant fat big dude known as Nork the Mysterious. I wasn't able to find solid numbers about his size, but you pretty much just need to see him next to the rest of the cast to realize that this guy is on another level. He can easily fill a large portion of the screen just with his big blue body and enormous arms. He even has a cape to boost, you know, just in case he wanted to seem a little more imposing. As his size would have you believe, Nork is a boss character, but he can be unlocked to be selected during normal gameplay, along with a pretty sizable roster of minor characters, each and every one of them weirder than the other. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of Tobo is the quest mode, which combines the game's fighting controls with three-dimensional dungeon exploration. The player must advance down a number of floors, contend with traps and engage in fights with a variety of enemies, collecting and using items along the way. Defeating certain characters in this mode unlocks them as playable characters in the game's other modes, which brings your total number of options to a much larger number than you ever expected after first seeing the select screen. So, if in 1996 you could pick a tiny grey-haired girl to face off against a giant big boss twice her size, what's so strange about big characters in fighting games, it's definitely not something we've never seen before. So that's it for now folks, like it or not, fighting games will probably continue to surprise us with wacky and unconventional characters from time to time, which may include someone much larger than you would expect. We can't complain about it or embrace it. I, for one, am all in favor of diversity. Leave a comment if you remember any other big fellas not listed here, and I'll see you guys later.